How's this? I don't know how it's recording, but okay. Um, All right, I'm not going to call the um, order the meeting to order until we have. Um, it's right at seven o'clock. It, it says seven o'clock. We have right Jim, now. so I, I got to move Jim over. Okay, so move Jim. Moving Jim, the panelist, so he should be coming over. Great, and then we need one of Nora or Ed to get a quorum to open the meeting, to be able to conduct business. Is there right. anybody else? Are there um, any? We just got we just got Jim. Jim has been promoted to panelist. We have um, Nora right. and Ed, so I got to promote them. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this is happening like this, okay. but. We're in a good good morning, both of the panelists. We have uh, Diane CC is here. Uh, she will be um, well, right now. She's the only that. attendee who isn't an ordinance committee member. Nora should be moving over as well. Nora's here. Good. So right now we have David. We have Lisa, Jim, David, and Nora. And you said you got to move Ed in? Uh, yeah, I don't know why I didn't come over. I'm going to try again. He declined to be promoted to panelist. Hmm. Should I, um, Ed is raising his hand. I'm going to try and allow him to talk and see what happens. Okay. There, he's over. He's he made it. Yeah. Well, I, I he I allowed him to talk. I need to promote oh. him to panelist. Hi Ed. Oh. Hi. Hi Ed. We're trying to make we're trying to promote you to panelist so that you're on board. Okay. Thanks. I didn't uh, get in, so I I re so I did it again. So maybe. It... I know we're not sure what's going on with the um. With I the got system. one this morning, and then I just sent out a copy of the invitation. I don't know at what time, but I sent it out. A little while ago. All right, let me let me see if I can promote Ed to panelist again. Let me try this again. Okay, we're gonna try one more time, and then we'll start the meeting for sure. Okay, Ed's coming over as a panelist. We have two members of the public right now. We have Diane Cece and Nicole Eady. Um, Great. Well, let me start the meeting officially. Then hold one on second. one second. Let me. I gotta do the uh, other thing. Bear with me. Hold on one second. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for giving up on Monday night. Yeah, we're already recording, right, Brian? Yeah, but I'm trying to get it onto YouTube now. Okay. We got about a 10 second delay once I click on the appropriate email account for it to go through. I'll let you know. Thank you. Yep. There we go. Hold on one second, we need a 10 second delay. You think you're good? Good now. Okay, great. All right. So I am calling to order the Common Council Ordinance Committee special meeting. Today's October 30th, and we're starting the meeting at 7.03. And we have Mr. Hubelman, Mr. Freyer, Mr. Camacho, and um, Norna Jaski eichner all here in attendance. So we have a quorum. Um, the first thing to do is to open the public hearing for the affordable housing ordinance. Um, Brian, is there anybody here who would like to speak in the public hearing? Uh, so right now we have two attendees. We have uh, Diane CC and Nicole Edi. Uh Diane and Nicole, if either of you would like to speak, please raise your hand. Diane would like to speak. Hold on one second. All right, Diane, uh, please unmute yourself and please go ahead. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? We can. I can. Uh, Diane CC, Olmstead Place. Um, do do you not do um, any presentation of the ordinance prior to the hearing? We do not. Um, okay. Um, I will, um, I'm working off of a copy that I think originally was in the minutes, but then it was posted with the legal notice. And um, I'm assuming that this version that was with the legal notice is the one that you're voting on tonight. The, it the, is. The last meeting okay yes this is i think the fourth meeting we've had discussing this um this matter so the way the public hearing works is we have the public hearing first and then we'll have a discussion and then a vote that's um regular order okay yep i think i've noticed that in um with with other um city business generally there's a presentation to the public who um may not be you know following all of your meetings or watching you know reading minutes or watching videos so um, I would say from a process point of view, it would benefit the public in the future to at least have staff provide a, 
a brief overview um, and direct people to where they can get more information um, because people will have another bite at the apple, I presume, when this goes to uh, gets advanced from you to the council, correct? Yes. Um, okay, so um, I did have a few general um, comments or a couple of specific things um, and then a, a, a general comment. Um, I also wanted to point out too, I'm sorry, I'm kind of a, a process wonk at my procedures here too, wonk, but the, the legal notice that got published, um, when, the, when the hour published it, I guess, um, it dropped the, a lot of the bullet point um, lettering. And instead it literally just has bullet points. And so um, I think that needs to be corrected. Um, just so so that it's clear to people, and especially now when I go to speak to you, these things are a bullet point, and I'll have to just say, you know, the first, second, or third bullet point versus A, B, C, D, et cetera. Um, the, the first thing is, is I, I, I wanted to say that this, this ordinance is, I see it referenced as the affordable housing ordinance, um, but I don't think that this is any kind of an affordable housing plan um, I don't think that was the intent, but it's rather the affordable housing account ordinance. And I guess that's really all that it speaks to, but I don't see any reference here that uh, cross-references this to a citywide affordable housing plan, unless I missed it in the fine print. The, um, I wanted to say in the preamble and the purpose of the affordable housing account that uh, for, for my purposes, you could drop all the bullet points there except for the last one. I'm not sure why it's necessary to have uh, commentary and I think some subjective observations there about uh, what you see as the need, you know, the current situation or the need for affordable housing. Under the um, definitions in qualified expenditures, um, I know that a lot of the meat of how this ordinance is going to work is is ultimately going to come in the um, criteria for awarding um, funding that uh, apparently the planning and zoning director will draft and submit, and that will need to be approved. Um, but at least in some of these things, like in qualified expenditures, I see that the expenditures um, can include but are not limited to labor and materials. and there's nowhere in here that talks about um, labor with any stipul stipulation that the priority would should be given to local contractors, if not uh, local residents. And is there something else that would dictate these funds going to someone that um, agrees to, um, um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm losing the word here, agrees to um, conform to whatever standards we have for um, living wage or prevailing wages. Um, I, and I guess part of my concern with this is that this could be going to developers whose contractors come from, you know, other parts of the country or um, are hiring people and um, paying a wage that we're, that we're actually trying to address right here in affordable housing in Nullwalk where people can't afford to to live, you know, to, to live where they work, et cetera. So um, I'm, I'm not sure if it should be addressed here or if it's cross-referenced elsewhere, but I think that that should be taken into account if any of these funds go for, for labor. Um, under subsection 1-6 uh, in the expenditures, the um, again, it, it directs the PNZ director to prepare all the criteria and the actual meat of how this thing is going to work. And then it goes on to the common council um, within a limited time frame for approval. But there isn't anything in here that stipulates. It, I, guess, I guess my question on this would be, if it doesn't get approved by the council, then is the ordinance still in effect or there, there is no ordinance, et cetera, without this actual um, document being approved? Um, under the second bullet point there, um, it says that the, the, the last sentence says the council shall have discretion to deny in whole, but not in part, such recommendations. And that led me to believe that, um, or that I wasn't sure 
if the vetting that gets done by the planning and zoning director for the incoming applications, um, will everything that met the criteria for applying get passed on to the council for consideration or will it be vetted um, at his or her discretion and then only those that he or she is recommending go forward to the council? Um, I, hope, I hope that was clear. Um, under subsection 1-7, for the affordable housing account reporting, um, this is one that I'm probably overly concerned with, but um, it says the committee shall on an annual basis or as otherwise requested by the council, prepare and deliver the report, um, et cetera. And I, I think rather than on an annual basis, I'd rather see you folks come up with a definitive date or time frame or month, you know, say by December of each year or January of each year so that the public one has an expectation of when they can reliably look to see, to track these things. Um, but also I think then it ties in with the city's budget um, process as well. And I, and I note in here that the city is able to allocate funds to this program. And it's probably worthwhile while the city is discussing budgets and allocation and funding of good programs to have this, make sure that this, um, that this information is available um, to officials in, in the appropriate time frame. So I think that should be like December or January. And then in subsection 1-7, um, oh, no, sorry, that's a duplicate there. The, the I also wanted to understand ahead of whatever the criteria is going to be, is the intent to advance this money um, ahead of um, any proposed work that's being done that's covered under this, the construction, remediation, repairs, improvements, et cetera, that, that laundry list there, is the money being advanced ahead of any project and then they have to come back and um, and then prove that they used it in the manner that it was intended or um, do they get like a, a um, kind of a preliminary approval and then once they get their CO for whatever work they did if everything complies with what the intent was um, of the spending of the money then do they get reimbursed for it I, I don't know if that's actually here in any of this wording or it comes later in the in the criteria, but um, I would want to understand that. Um, the second part of that for you folks is that if if it does get approved in advance and it gets awarded in advance, who's doing kind of the, the post-mortem on these projects and what happens if a particular project didn't comply with any of the components um, under which they, they got the money? Would they have to reimburse the money? Um, I don't see any of that kind of spelled out in here. Yeah, Ms. Cece, we're well past three minutes. I just want to see there's another speaker. I gave you a lot of headway because we do have time, but mm -hmm. is there much more? Uh, no, actually, that, that was it. I did have a general question that maybe someone can answer is that it's my understanding that this account or a similar account already exists, but it has a nominal amount of money in it. And I want to know if this is the same fund that already exists and it's just being... Um, codified with an ordinance and um, how, how does this relate to the fund that already exists and how much money is in that fund today? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak, Brian? Uh, no, uh, the, uh, the only, um, um, the only person uh, who's left the uh, Diane spoke and Nicole Edie's here, uh, but she does not have her hand raised. So there's nobody else. Okay, great. So um, I think where we are, uh, we've gone through many, many drafts of this um, ordinance. Um, the ad hoc housing committee has gone through um, many, many drafts and worked very hard on it. Nora, do you want to say anything in conclusion before we vote to um, take it to council? Sure, just very quickly um, to address a few of the questions that Ms. Cece raised. Um, I do want to explain that, yes, there is already money that the city has received over the last few years from developers. It's not an enormous amount of money, but there is an existing zoning regulation that requires developers in certain instances to contribute to this fund um, under our workforce housing regulation. And so this ordinance is to allow the city to actually expend those funds. Um, 
the majority of the questions that you, Ms. CC asked are questions that would be answered by the application process because many of those answers would vary depending on what the project were or that the um, affordable housing committee decided were the kinds of projects they wanted to fund in any given moment. So for instance, questions about whether the funds are paid beforehand or reimbursed depends in part on whether these are matching funds for other grants or, I mean, there's just a lot of um, complexities. And so the whole intent here is not to um, limit this program, but instead to let the affordable housing committee work with the planning, zoning, and community services departments every year to design the appropriate program for that particular year. Um, at one other question that Ms. Cece raised, I did want to clarify. Um, so the uh, affordable housing committee that will account a committee that will be established by this will review the applications they will forward those applications to the council with their recommendations. So again, the whole point of this committee is to have folks who have experience in the affordable housing space, both lived experience and professional expertise, to opine on both what we should be funding in a given year, the criteria, and then also on the particular applications. The line about the council um, being able to uh, uh, vote on a project in whole or in part um, is to make clear that the council cannot pick and choose within an application, um, but the council will act on the recommendations of the ad hoc committee, or excuse me, of the affordable housing committee as to the applications that they have received and reviewed in, in detail. Um, I think that's it for the primary points that I wanted to clarify there. Um, yeah, and then Ms. Shanahan, I think, um, I think that's it. Great. Are there any other comments from other committee members or questions that we ought to address before we take this to vote to take it to Common Council? Mr. Freyer. Um, yes, and maybe uh, Nora already covered this, but uh, there doesn't seem to be anything in there that that puts a time limit on how, how, how long you have to spend the money if you are selected for an award. Or is that going to be part of the criteria um, or the application phase that there's a limit. So I, I could foresee somebody getting approved for funds and then tying funds up, which would uh, maybe limit the amount of uh, funds we could give to somebody else if they don't uh, begin their, their projects on a timely basis. And again, I think that would need to be left to the criteria because for instance, if the committee decided that what they were going to do was matching funds for a state grant, then the applicant is going to have to comply with the state grants or you know whatever it is that they're trying to match with versus if as Ms. CC suggested it's a reimbursement for something that was you know already built criteria then we might have a much more narrow time frame for getting the money out the door so again i think that's the kind of detail we wanted to leave to the particular criteria so that we can have maximum flexibility to for the committee to really sort of see what in the particular moment is the best available use of the funds yeah, I just didn't want to tie funds up and have them sit there. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree that we should. We have to remember that that should be built into the application phase. Right, and I think I mean you know I I think that that is the kind of thing um, you know thankfully that we have I think staff who have a fair amount of experience because remember that all of this will also planning and zoning will will certainly be oversee this, but this will also have to comply with all of the cities. Um, you know, standard regulations around right. purchasing and uh, procurement and all that. So I'm sure that Ms. O'Connor, Ms. Connors will have <laughs> many stipulations as to the requirements uh, to comply with our, our general sort of regulations around expenditure of funds. Okay. Great. Other questions or comments? Mr. Hooverman. Yeah, this is, this is a complete and total nit, but it's um, in 16B, let me pull it up, Dave. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. This is a question I had when I read it. It, it. The third one, fourth line, shouldn't should individual or entity, shouldn't that be plural? Or should there be from an interested individual or entity? Solicit applications for such funds. 
I think an interested individual entity or individual with, you know, the parentheses S on, you know, I, I think it's easier to say an interested entity. Which, whichever, but it's just, it's grammatical. Mm -hmm. um, Good catch. Let's right. note that when we send it over to, um, well, when we uh, make the motion to um, forward it to council, we should make that amendment. Um, that was it. I, I just have one thing that I would like to say, which is that I, I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about a cadence that we've gotten into. And this is a larger general thing. It's not uh, necessarily directed at this um, uh, particular ordinance, but the preambles that we are writing for all of these ordinances now, uh, where we are, we're really starting to make uh, subjective commentary within those preambles that I'm, I'm not certain that those belong within the ordinances as we uh, are codifying what it would be considered law for the city. Um, and that's just something that moving forward, I know I, I won't be a part of this, but uh, it's something to think about that uh, we, we, we're walking a line and this has happened, this is starting to happen more and more uh, where we're making, I think, commentary on what we're doing as opposed to uh, doing that which we should be doing. Um, and that's all I wanted to say about that. That's a good point. So um, does someone wanna make a motion to move the ordinance as amended with that um, correction that Mr. Hoofelman made to council? Well, on one second, uh, Lisa, one, bear with me one second. I just wanna take a look at one eight with you guys real quick. Was it in one eight or one six? I thought it was in one six. Do you have yeah, this is a, it's um third line down. I credit Diane for finding this. She just sent a, a question. It's um it should be received funds, not fines. Oh good, good catch. Thank you very much. Yep. <laughs> so making the second correction with the two corrections, does someone want to make a motion to send this to thank you, Mr. Camacho? Yeah, I'll make a um, all in favor of moving this um, as amended ordinance to common council. Great. So that's unanimous. We have one other um, piece of business, which is to move to accept the minutes of October 17th, um, 2023, our regular ordinance, our regular minutes. Um, if someone would make that motion. So Thank moved. you very much, Mr. Hooverman. And everybody in favor? accepting the minutes. And I just want to take one point of order, which is to thank Mr. Hoovelman and Mr. Camacho very much for their service on this committee. I can't tell you what the contributions is that you, you have each made. Uh, Mr. Camacho came to the rescue of the leaf blower ordinance last uh, couple meetings ago. That was great. And um, David, I've worked so closely with you on so many ordinances, and we are going to definitely miss um, the wisdom of both of you um, going forward. We're going to miss you guys a lot. So thank you for your service in the last um, the last year in Mr. Camacho's case and David for the last four years. Thank you, David, and thank you, Ed. It was a pleasure. It's been really great. It's really so nice to work with. So um, the tradition is is that the people who are leaving the committee would make a joint motion to adjourn. Uh, okay, one, two, three. And joint you're... motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> Everyone's in favor. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for making time on this Monday night. Happy Halloween to everybody. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you.